leader, but we want freedom. Leaders said to us before that all Iranians would have freedom. We want freedom. Now, we really thought that Islam is the religion of freedom. Ayatollah is not letting that to happen in this country. We were radical Muslims. We didn't know that Islam hates freedom. As a radical Muslim, you don't need to know Islam. You just blindly follow Islam. Because, according to Islamic doctrine, you cannot understand Islam. You're not able to understand. You just ask your leader. Follow blindly, you know, the leader. It's, it's an Arabic term. It says, Al-Avvam kal an'am. That means all humankind are anim animals especially concerning understanding the Quran. So we still thought Islam is the religion of freedom. Ayatollah is not letting us to bring that freedom to the country. We said we are going to have this freedom. Now, we are not giving this freedom to Jews and Christians. These people are our brothers and sisters. We started our propaganda. We won. Government fell in our hands. Not in all areas. Some of us, in, in some areas, these clerics were so powerful, they didn't let really these people who want to go to parliament or to take their positions. But generally speaking, the people who were in our group, or they were thinking like us, they won. My colleague, the first president after Islamic Revolution, Abul Hassan Banisad, he won the presidency with 98% of people's vote. So this means that Ayatollah, in one year, lost. They just had 2%. Now what did they do? Do they say, well, this is a freedom. I mean, people voted for this you know, group of people and they won. We have to sit back? No, that's not Islam. In the Quran says, the only party of God, which is Hezbollah, is triumphant. And they are thinking we are the only group and party of Allah. We have to triumph. They started to kill the members of government in secret. Three times they tried to kill the president. Eventually he left his position, escaped to France. He's a refugee in France. Government was destroyed. Some of us killed. Some escaped. And some were taken to prison. I was one of them kidnapped in night time. My family did not know where I was. I'm put in a dead cell for a month. I lived three months in a toilet. You were not able to stretch your leg there. Horrible prison. They torture you. They dig you know, the areas of your body's wound. They give you a harder time. You beg them to kill you, they do not. They just give you a harder time so that you, at the end, say, look, I'm going to follow you. Especially for ladies and girls, especially virgin girls, that prison was a hell. Because if you have a death penalty, they sleep with you every night. Especially in Iran, killing virgin girls in Islam is sin. You have to sleep with her and then kill her. Now, the pain is after that. You take the dress of that girl and go to her family, call the mom, and you say to mom, you're just doing your religious obligation. We slept with your daughter, and we killed her, and this is the dress of your daughter. Some of these mothers died on the spot. Many of them fainted. Were this mother, these mothers Jews and Christians? No, Muslims. Islam is a cruel religion to Muslims too. Iranian government at the you know, first several years killed between 50 to 60,000 young Iranian Muslim bo boys and girls. So that's the prison. They kill you hundreds of times. And from there I was taken to another prison with four other friends. They put us in an underground cell waiting in the death row. Certain deaths. Four of them were killed. I'm here speaking for the glory of the one who 
released me. I escaped from Iran to Turkey without my family. I was not hoping to see my wife and children anymore, but glory be to his name. He had also planned for my children and for my wife. They joined me later. In Turkey, I learned the language to make myself busy, entered university. In the second year, I found a fellow Iranian man. He had a business there. We became friends with each other. He encouraged me to put my money with his, make the capital larger to make more money. I did it. But later, he took all my money and he escaped to Germany. Another thing came to my life. I lost all my money. My family is not here. Lost my money. This is so painful. If my family joins me in the future, what should I do? I went to the international police. They couldn't help me because I, could, I didn't have any receipt in my hand. Everything was in his name. I couldn't prove it. Now, before doing that to me, once he invited me to his rented apartment in Istanbul for a cup of tea. I saw a New Testament on a coffee table in his house. It was shocking to find the New Testament in a Muslim's house. I said to him, where did you get this from? He was terrified. He forgot to hide it. Normally, you hide it, and then you believe in Jesus, you show it to other people. He immediately said to me, you know that I'm Muslim. I said, I know you're Muslim, but where did you get this from? That was given to him by Iranian Christians who were not able to live inside the country after the Islamic Revolution. They escaped from the country, and with those foreign Christians who were working in that country, they started a fellowship in Istanbul and working among Iranian refugees too, and having fellowship with each other. In Christmas time, they called Iranian, many Iranians, to, to their Christmas party, and at the end of the party, they gave a New Testament to everyone as a gift, and this was coming from there. He shocked me in that day. He said to me, you know what? Many Muslims have become Christians. I said, that's impossible. For a Muslim to become Christian? How can a person go from a civilized religion to uncivilized religion? Islam is new religion, 600 years new than Christianity. Well, they do not accept the new ones. When you say to them, well, there are new ones too. In an Iran, Iranian case, there are Baha'i religion, in you know, India, Sikh religion, in Western society, you know, Jawas witnesses or Mormons. No, no, that's the only one they say to you. That's the last and perfect one. Why? By the way, there is no any why in Islam. If you say why, you're killed. I couldn't believe that. He said, many people have become Christian. He said to me, well, I can take you to the church and you can talk to them and you can believe it. One day, actually, he showed the church to me. But before taking me to the church, you took my money and escaped. I had no choice but to go to that church to ask why this happened to me and possibly they... Uh, were able to give me some ideas. For that reason, I went to the church. For the first time, I went to the church. And before going into the church, I was terrified, really. I was afraid. Especially if you have come from Iran, you're afraid from everybody. You think that everybody is spying on you. Especially coming from that background, a Muslim sees me, hey, you went to the church. What would be your response? Anyway, my money encouraged me to go in. I entered the church, I was shocked. They were playing music, some people were, you know, many people were singing there. I was shocked. Music in a worship place? Music is evil for Islam. You do not play music in the, you know, worship center. Middle Eastern people are very musical people. Islam couldn't erase that from their life. But you do not play in the, in the mosque. Uh, recently even... Clergy in Australia, clerics, you know, called upon all Muslims in Australia, withdraw all your children from music schools in the, in the public school, because music is evil. But I say to you, I was really blessed for the first time I heard that a prophet was a musician. He was praising God with his instruments, David. Now, I'm a musician now. 
I think that's the punishment of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> I loved music from childhood, uh, but I couldn't touch it because of Islam. And eventually, after escape, I tried to learn it. So these people were standing all, they were singing with that music. I said, I'm not going to stand with them. Now, that's not the Iranian attitude. Generally speaking, Iranians are very nice, open people. They stand with you even though they do not like your ideas. But I said, no, I'm not going to stand with them. I sat behind everybody closer to the main door. I said, something is strange happened, easier to run out. <laughs> That's, again, is the mindset. Especially if you're a committed Muslim, uncertainty is everywhere. You know, the greatest Muslim is Muhammad. He's uncertain. He doesn't know even about his future. Anyway, nothing happened inside the church. They had invited a Turkish preacher. He was preaching in Turkish. Someone was translating into Persian or Farsi for those Iranians who did not know the language, and I was hearing the message twice. But it didn't work. My mind was engaged with my business partner. I was killing him 100 times a day. In my mind, I didn't have time, really, to think about that or to listen. After the fellowship, they saw... And a stranger is here. Everybody came and welcomed me very warmly. And I said the story to them. They became so sad. One of them said to me something that I had heard that 16 years almost every night in my dream. That was a saying in Turkish with a, with a poetic rhyme. Now, for 16 years, almost every night in my dream I was flying, there was a voice always beside me saying, do not look at the ground, you will fall and die. Look to heaven, you will live forever. And that was that idiom in poetic language he said to me, in Turkish. He, say, he shook his head, he said, this is this world. Don't look at this world. You will die. Look to heaven. You will live forever. I said to him, I have seen this 16 years in my dream. They said to me, we can write letters to our friends in Germany. We have many friends there. We can encourage them to search for this man and uh, find him and to beg him to give your money back. It's a huge money. You have a family. They promised me to write the letters from the following night. They encouraged me to go to the church. They said, if we get any response from them, then we would be able to share that with you. After that, week after week, I went to the church. I was very punctual <laughs> for my money. But week after week, these people amazed me. They were very nice people. We always called in our lifetime that Christians are the most immoral people in the world. Especially, they have very bad saying about Christian girls and ladies. We were amazed. These people are so nice people. They are helping Muslims sacrificially. Now, we Muslims call them infidels, unclean, ungodly people, but what a beautiful people these ungodly, unclean people are. <laughs> I remember the path, palms of a great Iranian Part from 13th century, he had said something about these people, but I was not able to understand in that time. He said, I was empty of love and very harsh. And the love of infidel people drew my attention. I went to them. I am full of love and smooth now. I said, wow, he's talking about these people. The, in Iranian poetry, a lot of witnesses for the Lord Jesus. You can, if you know a little bit, uh, you know, Iranian palm, you can challenge their hearts because they love really palms. These people were wonderful people. Their messages were so powerful. We belong to the kingdom of God, not Satan anymore. God is mighty, isn't he? Every Muslim knows God is mighty. Can mighty God save? Well, everybody in the world knows that. If mighty, mighty can save. This is a powerful, simple, philosophical, and apologetic question. You can ask 
from Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, they are challenged. Are we sinners? Muslims know, yes, they are sinners too, because Quran says to them, you're a loser. They even understand that better than you. They concern about their future. We were in problem. We called the mighty God, please come and help us. He did not ignore us. He can't ignore us. If we ask our parents, come please help us, do they ignore us? If your limited parent is not able to ignore you, what about mighty God? We asked him. He came, unchained us from the bondage of Satan, took us home, sealed us with his spirit. We now belong to God. We are living with God. If God is with you, can Satan be with you? No. It was so powerful. I loved it, really. I was teaching philosophy in Eva, and that was understandable for me. But I didn't say to them, I love it. Because for me, they had some other funny ideas. I didn't want really, with confirming this one, to confirm other ones too. They called Jesus as God. This was funny for me. Koran says Christians have made a man as God for themselves. That's the belief of Islam. Koran, scholars in Islam, they do not know that it's not a man-made God. It's God who made himself a man. This is different philosophy. They do not know that. They also said Jesus is the only Savior. I said, this is selfish. What about others? Jesus is the Son of God. Wow, this is terrible. If you believe in the Koran, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you're the worst of all creatures. You have to be killed and you go to hell. That's in the Koran. They also spoke a lot about Jews. Open the Bible, read it. Jews, close it, Jews. I hated Jews. I said, what is wrong with these nice people? Beautiful people, funny ideas. I really fell for them. I said, I'm going to help these people. <laughs> they are nice people. They are going to get my money back. I will help them. I will open their eyes. These people are nice people. You can approach to them and criticize them, and they do not kill you for criticism. <laughs> they are not like Middle Eastern people. Unfortunately, criticism is enemy. Because it's starting from the Quran. In chapter 8, verse 10 to 13 says, If you criticize Islam, your fingers are chopped and then your head. So it has penetrated every aspect of life. If you criticize someone, you have to be careful. I can approach this to, to these people and I say to them, Hey people, you're, you're nice people. And in addition, you're going to do a great favor to me to get my money back. I'd really love to help you. I think you're nice people, simple people, but far behind. That was, that was really my heart. But praise the Lord Jesus Christ that these simple, pe simple people changed my life. Now, these people really were powerful people. And their power also was coming from that simplicity. Behind that simplicity really was great power. And that was the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, if you become simple, Lord Jesus comes into your life and he works in your life mightily. And he did in the life of these people. Unfortunately, I'm saying this to you because Christianity has become, um, you know, complex in, this, in the, you know, Christian world. And people just, you know, living... Um, it, you think that's not a unit really of Christ they are not simple Christians are not simple generally speaking but these people were so simple and mighty God came into their life and through them worked in my life one day I was so painful all pains of my life came to me in that moment I lost my money my family is not here. I don't know. I'm going to 
going to go to see them again or not. 